this mud slab behind me here. It's full of dinosaur prints. Here, check it out. Well, I am at the trailhead for the subway. It does have a bathroom, so it's like pretty clearly marked up top, but from what I understand, it's uh, kind of hard to track and follow, especially in the dark. And it's about five in the morning, so it's plenty dark right now. But uh, I got a head torch, so that should help a little bit. But let's see if we can find it. I made it to the first set of Cascades. A lot more boulder scrambling than I had expected. A lot of uh, stream crossing too. So I've seen a couple, at least one group of people on the way in. I thought I heard some people behind me too. Which I'm sure there will be plenty. With any luck, we got this started early enough that I'll be at least somewhat able to get set up in a good spot. This is one of the more popular places for sure so I don't have high expectations especially with being my first trip here so I'm gonna try not to fall down this falls like I just did <laughs> let's try that again most of the color on all the trees here is pretty much done just lost its leaves onto the ground already doesn't look like we're gonna get much for fall color shots anyway. We'll see, um, we're by no means there yet, so. One man film crew. That's very probably about one of the most beautiful waterfalls I've ever seen. And I have it all to myself right now, which is rad, but the sun's not actually up yet. And the shot is a little flat. So I'm not, not sure I want to stop just yet. Maybe just make the subway and try to hit this on the way back. But the thing I'm risking is there'll probably be other people here when I do come back. Ideally, it'd be nice to get that rock wall up there to glow. Surprisingly, there's still a lot of color in the trees still. More than I expected. And check it out. There comes the sun. So now I'm really not sure what I want to do because there's at least one group ahead of me. It's probably at Subway already. I don't know if I want to go try to set up and get a spot for my tripod there or if I want to hang out here and wait for the sun to come up and get this shot by myself. Tough call. I think I'm gonna stick. I don't know if I'll regret that later or not, but this is too good not to get. Everything's wet everywhere. It's actually really difficult to find a dry spot to put even my bag down. So I've moved my tripod about a half a dozen times now trying to get situated on a composition, but I think I found it. It's 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 the same shot everybody takes at this waterfall. It's nothing revolutionary by any means, but it's new to my portfolio, so that's what counts to me. So I'll walk you through it real quick. I put that nice yellow tree right there up on the right third. Tried to get the wall in the back up on the left third. And the waterfall is a, is a focal point in the middle. Pretty much standard composition rules. Currently, right now, I'm focused up here on the on this wall, which is pretty much infinity for me, the way I'm set right now. I'm set up and focused right now. I'm just waiting for the light. So I'm just gonna hang out and uh, wait, play the waiting game.
Check this out. That one's gonna fall in the waterfall again. Those maples are an absolute peak. Perfect fall color. I'm gonna try to sit on this shot as long as I can and get this one because this one's real mission critical, I think. And then uh, head up the subway, see if I can get that shot. Hopefully it's not too crowded by the time I get there. Maybe the group ahead of me will get their shots and move on. But then on the way back, hopefully there'll be some more lightness fan in here and I'm gonna scope that out and see if I can make a composition of that because that's what I came for. Just waiting for that one tree right there. Quit blowing around in the wind. I'm not sure how much better it gets. It may get better as I get more light, but it looks really good right now, so I think I'm gonna shoot it. And, uh, Maybe we'll stick around and make sure it doesn't improve, but it's looking pretty killer right now, so. So I have my camera set for touchscreen on a two second timer to prevent camera shake from taking the image. I focused three different images, one on the back wall, one towards the mid ground where this rock is, and another right in the foreground here where you can see the box. That way I can uh, focus stack it if need be when I get back. And then I'll just touch two second timer and take the shot. Well that's one shot in the bag. I'm gonna stick around and see what the light does. My light source is actually on this canyon, canyon wall behind the shot, reflecting into that. And uh, it's pretty much lit as much as it's gonna get. I'm just gonna observe and make sure that uh, that is the case. Just for future reference, I'm gonna leave my tripod right where it is right now, just in case something changes. But I mean, it's a crystal clear blue day. I'm here by myself. It's, it doesn't get any better than this. This whole place is magic, man. Absolutely magic. Unbelievable, but it appears as though I have this place to myself. So I'm gonna get a tripod set up real quick and uh, see if I can frame this. I kind of get my own choice to where I want to set up, so that's good. Although it looks like I'm not sure what's up with the glow. It's there. I don't know if it gets any stronger or not. Probably, but I'm probably gonna be spending some time watching that to see if. Uh, See if we can learn anything about how that goes. So, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get set up. Well, once again, everything here's wet. So there's like one spot that I can put my pack. <laughs> but you gotta be careful here because it's like that's really wet, and that's ouch, and then really wet.
So I found a composition that it's probably the standard subway composition that pretty much everybody shoots. Probably the reason everybody shoots that is it's the best one. But um, you get that emerald pool in the foreground and the tunnel in the back. Um, a bit of water off the water the falls here right in front and foreground too. Um, got a pretty good glow going right now, but there is there is some water on the walls of the canyon and it's causing some glare. So I've got my landscape polarizer on and I'll show you what I got going on here. So I got my Lee landscape polarizer on uh, with their filter holder. And what that's doing for me is it's cutting the glare off the glow on the canyon wall here. But it's also taking the glare and the white overblown highlights off the water. So if I spin this, you can kind of see how that cuts the glare off the water in the canyon wall. The drawback of that is it does add some exposure time. It stops it down just a hair, so I got to I'm at a kind of a dilemma here. It's not exactly the brightest here. And I kind of like the half a second exposure because it keeps the water, it keeps moving in the water, but it doesn't make it so wispy that it just kind of washes out. Um, F9, because I really want to try to keep as much of this in focus as I can, so I don't have to focus that quite so much. I like F9, I like half a second. It means I have to raise my ISO to 800 in order to get this shot which is about as high as I'm comfortable going, but it can introduce grain and noise into your photo when you increase the sensor sensitivity too high, which is why I like to keep it at base ISO, which is 100 on this camera, um, as much as possible. But in something like this, it's pretty dark in here, so I don't have much choice. And if I'm stuck with my other settings, then I gotta crank it, so. But the other thing I can do is open the aperture all the way up and just take more shots for a, focus, a bigger focus stack, which I also shot that, uh, so I have options when I get to Lightroom later. And we'll see. Other than that, I don't know if I'm gonna get a whole lot more light than I've got right now. The canyon wall that's around the corner is what's providing the uh, light source here, and it's fully lit right now. And I got blue skies, so it's probably about as maxed out as it's gonna get. Uh, for now, I think I'm good with this composition. I'm probably gonna move my tripod and play around with some other compositions because I wanted to try to get some more of these leaves in the foreground. I think they're kind of cool, but they are just kind of clumped up a little bit, so it might just be chaos in the scene. But now I think I got uh, the shot I came for. Now I can experiment a little more, so. So one of the things that was stoked for the most on this hike, um, besides the uh, awesome photography, was uh, this mud slab behind me here. It's full of dinosaur prints. Here, check it out. I mean, the dinosaur has been gone for 65 million years, and that means this mud rock is at least that old. And unless it was formed like immediately when the asteroid hit, it's likely a lot older than that. Plus it's just right here on the side of the trail. Just blows my mind. So uh, immediately like when you get just off the trailhead, the start of the trailhead here, there's this massive drop off you have to descend to get down into the canyon into uh, to the river level which means that uh, you have to climb that on the way out. So, way up behind me there. The top of that. Yeah, that's where my truck is. <laughs> Not looking forward to that. the bus up to Big Bend and there's not really much happening photography wise here it's all it's all pretty flat all the lights gone for the day but that's okay it's, it's just cool to hang out and be out here um, peacefulness of being by the river and stuff is just good for this old man but um, subway was good I that's got me feeling really good about this trip now so now I got to decide what I'm gonna do with tomorrow tomorrow is my last full day here 
I have Sunday as well, but I have to leave Sunday and be and get back into town. So if anything, it's gonna be early morning, kind of a half day at the most. And then I got a five hour drive home back to Salt Lake. So, so tomorrow I gotta make it count. The weather forecast looks good in the morning. It originally looked like it was gonna be just straight blue sky all day. And when I looked at the forecast earlier this afternoon, it looked like there were some high clouds expected in the afternoon. So trying to plan accordingly, I'll check it again when I wake up and make the ultimate decision. But mission critical would be to get up in these maple groves sometime tomorrow. The only thing I'm trying to balance though is I was hoping to get another crack at floating a rock in the narrows and that's an afternoon shot. Although I haven't shot it this late in the afternoon, so I'm not sure with the sun not staying up in the sky as long. It might actually be earlier in the day than what I expect. So if I don't get it, that's fine. I've already shot it once, but I was kind of hoping to get, a, to get a redo. My last composition was fine. My last trips I was here, I shot that and it turned out fine, but the water level was a little low and I was hoping to get a little bit more, more water, more interest in there, you know? We'll see what that happens or not. Um, I'm okay with it either way, but Right now, all the light's gone in the canyon. Um, sundown is about 45 minutes away from now. It's nice being out here, but I might just wrap up and hop the shuttle bus back to the campground and just call it an early night and get some good sleep. I could really use that, especially since tomorrow is gonna be a potentially full day again too, so. Yeah, see you back at camp.